Good evening. Thank you very much for coming. This is a free concert. You aren't being charged, but if you'd like to make donation, it goes to the church power bill, I guess, because I paid to use the sanctuary tonight. So if you make any donations, anything beyond what I paid, will go to them. I also sell CDs. If you're ready for Christmas season, I composed a series of hymns and carols that uh, I wrote the harmony for, and it's for clarinet with cello and flute. It was performed once in Spain and never since then, but I have those after the program. If you decide you need the restroom, it's down the back stairs along that wall and under the stairs. Be careful on the stairs, but it's down and under. And you can get it and move around whenever you need to. Um, I play recorders. That's what these instruments are. I have a whole series of them tonight. Some are resin, plastic. Some are, some are wood. Some are handmade. Some are machine made. What I will be playing tonight is a program that I have called, I forgot already, Laments, Dances, and Lullabies. So Steve can fall asleep. And every one of them I wrote, I'm the composer. I consider myself a living composer because I'm still alive. The first piece I'm playing is called Festival Dance, and it's being played on a handmade soprano recorder. It's is a version called Ganassi, which is a special bore and fingering pattern different than what school children play. It's similar, but not quite the same. And this one came from Norway, made by a lady named Bodil Dyson, or possibly Deason. I've never heard it pronounced. She sent me this one and this one because during Hurricane Katrina, all my music and instruments were stolen. And she heard about it, so she sent me two handmade instruments. This one is my favorite. So let's start with festival dance. This instrument is a tenor. It was made in Germany. It's a manufacturing process. They are hand work, but they're large machines they use, and they make a whole lot of recorders. The company is named Mock or Molk, M-O-E-C-K, it's German. In Europe, Taiwan, and Japan, there's a lot of recorder playing, a lot of recorder players and music. It's not so prevalent here in the US. The next piece is called Amir's Lullaby, and it was written for a young boy whose father disowned him on the day of his birth. 
He was Palestinian. He lived in Houston, um, excuse me, Fort Worth, Texas. And I knew his mother and her sister. And I was there a couple of times during his early youth and played this for him, and he went to sleep. So I was kind of proud that it didn't upset him. So this is a lullaby, Steve. You can close your eyes now. <laughs> Steve's my sleeping friend. Except we, never mind, that was, didn't come out right. Steve, good night. When I first started playing recorders, I think I was 15 or 16, the flute teacher at my school came to me, a cellist, and said, we need another player. Would you come play? So I did. On this alto, uh, Aulos, made in Japan. And she wanted me to play soprano, too. They're different fingerings. Well, they're the same fingerings, but they play different notes. Um, so this was my first instrument. This was my second instrument the same year. 
This is made by Dolmetz, a um, German, uh, in German, English, I forgot. England, I can't read it. Carl Dolmetz was a famous recorder player and he traveled the world trying to broaden the horizons of other recorder players. This piece is called Xanth, X-A-N-T-H, and it was dedicated to Piers Anthony, who was an author. He wrote a series of books on Xanth, which is a fictional world. I always liked it. Of all the pieces I've written that have been dedicated to someone, he is the only person who ever responded back to me to thank me for it and told me his mother used to play recorders when he was young and he really enjoyed it. So I'm going to play Xanth. So this was the first instrument I played. It's an Aldos uh, alto. And I'm going to play a piece called A Father's Lament. It could have been a mother's lament, but I wrote it and I was the father, so it's a father's lament.
If you're familiar with woodwind instruments, they gather moisture from the air, or spit as some people call it, and it collects in the, wood, uh, the uh, wind channel right up here in the mouthpiece. And temperatures like this, it collects faster. So it was clogging my instrument. So you may have heard me sucking on it or having to stop at different places where there are no rest because I had to get the moisture out and three notes disappeared because the moisture blocked my um, air path, airway. The second one is also a lament, not the second, the next one. It's called a husband's lament, and I felt the two should go together. In fact, they were written one after the other, the same day, back in 2007. So a husband's lament. And let's get away from lamenting and the crying and the tears and all. This one's called Queen's Frolic and was written for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. And I sent it to her or her staff. I don't know if she ever saw it or heard it. And I never received a thank you for sending anything. So maybe it got lost in the mail. A frolic is a type of um, dance group dancing, and it sounds kind of like the word play in the garden, and that's what it was intended for. Queen's Frolic.
I didn't introduce this instrument. It's a Yamaha. It's a student-grade resin instrument. A better quality than a lot of the student grades I've run across in the country, but it has a nice bright sound to it. The next one is called Royal Dance. How about that? Queen's Frolic and Royal Dance. And I'm playing on the Bodil Decent Alto. This piece is very special to me. It's another lullaby. It's called Child of Hay Lullaby. I'm a hay. I wrote it for my children. I used to sing it to them as I walked the floors many nights while they were teething. And I hope that they sing it to their own children now. It does have words, but I'm not going to sing the words for you. I'm just playing.
This is my Rossler. It's from Germany. It's a student grade. I think I told you that. And I'm going to use it to play a piece I called Canticular. Um, canticles were a type of music form. And Canticular was stolen from that name. So I guess that makes me a thief. But the music was original. Some of you know I used to live up Rose Valley in a cabin that I built on a friend's property. And I used to feed my chipmunks out there, and then I'd play inside my cabin with one single window. And while I was practicing my recorders, some of them would line up on the window ledge. I'd have four or five or six little chipmunks watching in through my window. And as soon as I stopped playing, they'd tap on the glass. Say so like, it's time to come out and feed us again. Come on out, feed us again. This one is called Prancing Chipmunk. And although I wrote it long before I had those pet chipmunks, I um, actually didn't name it until I lived up here in Rose Alley. It just had a number on it, Opus 407. So they made it Prancing Chipmunk. And this is being played on the Alos Alto. Excuse me, that needs to be started over. Okay.
in cold weather, this is actually one of my most reliable instruments, especially for the highest notes. It seems to hit them most of the time. Some of the other instruments kind of flake out at the highest notes. I'm trying to read my note on which instrument I'm using. This is the same instrument. Let me double check, make sure I'm not exceeding the range here. Yes. This one's called Water Flute, and it's in an unusual time signature. It's um, in 5-8, so there are five counts or five beats per measure, which may throw your timing off. If you get dizzy or something, just wait. It'll be over shortly. Good. You want to hold on for Sorry. Okay, while I'm holding on, I'll introduce. I'm being filmed by Tyler Bow, and his friend John is doing the audio for me. And I will be uploading each piece, <laughs> if I decide I played well enough, to YouTube. You ready, John? Yeah, sorry about that. I had to switch batteries, so. Oh, okay. You're good. Thank you. Water flute. to imagine how with a dry mouth I'm getting so much moisture in my instruments. This piece is called Minor Marvin. It has a surprise in it. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but you'll find it. Minor because it's written in minor and Marvin was a workmate at UPS. He asked me one day if I could write music anywhere. And I said yes. And he handed me the Denny's restaurant menu Table, uh, tabletop piece of paper, whatever you call that thing, and a pen, and I wrote this piece of music right there for him.
I apologize, I'm having troubles with moisture condensation. This one is named Bodil Deason for the person who handcrafted this instrument. The value of these instruments was much more than the piece of music I wrote and sent to her. And I told her if she wanted to, she could put it in the package for every instrument that she sold. So it has traveled around the world. Thank you. Um, one of my favorite composers was J.S. Bach. I ran across a piece of his called Bury, which is a type of dance also, in A minor. And it triggered me to write my own piece, which has very much of his sound in it, but is not close enough to even be considered an arrangement. It's a completely different piece. So this is called Bach Bury.
I said this would uh, end at 8 o'clock. I'm running short of time. I'm going to play a very different type of piece. This is in five movements. And you'll know that each movement is over because there will be a slight pause between each of the five. It's based upon plain song, which is a very old form of music and also became or became known as Gregorian chant, which was used in the Catholic Church and still is. It makes beautiful choral music. So this is written in the same style as the um, plain song, which lots of us have heard. This one is called Five Soul Cleaned Chants. I've also composed six soul something chants and seven soul something chants. But this was the first of the three group series.
Thank you. That's all for this concert. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Tyler. This room has wonderful sounds. I hope I did it some justice tonight, uh, despite the number of mistakes I made and the great fight I had with condensation. Some of the notes you heard were simply because of moisture. Others were because of my fingers. But we do the best we can, and hopefully you enjoyed it. If you would like to make a donation to the church, that would be appreciated for covering the costs. Or if you'd like to come by other music that I wrote, I have a CD of Christmas music. Any questions from anybody? No? Yeah, I'd like to. Um, Lonnie and I have played recorders as duets. In fact, one day we played, the one time, we played, what, four hours? I think, three and a half, four hours. Yeah, we had a great time. And uh, if you know Willow or Leosho, well, I can't say her proper name. We, everybody calls her Willow. She plays the harp. She played in my bakery, and I, she and I um, improvise. And we've done that a number of times. And at their house, I've played recorder with her recorder or her harp or her piano, or she plays everything. <laughs> She's fantastic to listen to. And I hope we can have more types of music brought in to town and play. That's why I did this, I was trying to set a precedence. And this is just a wonderful sounding place to do it. So I thank the Episcopal Church. Yes? I have a, uh, a really beautiful Indian flute. Is it, how similar is that? The native flutes are a, in pentatonic scale, not in major, minor, or modal music like the uh, so-called Western music, classical music. So they, they sound wonderful. I cannot play them. Willow's husband, Neil Martin, does. He play, in fact, he has a collection of 30 or 40 or 50 of them. And they can be really beautiful sounding or they can be really nasty. It depends on who made them. Same thing with recorders. If you ever see a fluorescent colored plastic, clear see-through type recorder for students and it's 99 cents, don't buy it because they sound terrible. And kids learn from what they play. So if they're given cheap instruments to play, they'll discover that it's not very fun unless they're trying to irritate their parents, and that's always fun. And then they'll quit. So they didn't benefit from it. And I spent almost 10 years traveling the country, playing at schools and nursing homes and um, parks and all, trying to show children that there's more beyond their first year of recorder class in any music or with their recorders as well. So I was presented as a living composer and performer. And I really enjoyed doing that for the children. It's, it's great to see their eyes light up. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. I'm glad some people were able to come out tonight. That's it, you can cut me off. <laughs> <laughs>